And we are back with another road game vlog. We head up to Ovar later today around four. We play Overance for the League Cup. It's a pretty big game for us. We win this, we move to the next round of the cup. But more importantly than that, it's a big game for us because our last game is about six days ago, was by far our worst game as a team. We lost by 20 on the road to a team that we shouldn't have. We definitely shouldn't have lost that game. And for me personally, I played horrible. So I wanna kind of take you guys through some of the stuff that I do to combat a bad game and some of those thoughts that run through my head after a bad game and how to be professional about your performance and not get too emotional. So I'm gonna take you guys with me on this road trip and I'll catch up with you all soon. <laughs> yeah, we're here early. All right, so we have team practice first. We have film, basically scouting, brush up on personnel, kind of some of the plays that Ovar will run. Then after that, we hop on the bus and it's like a two and a half hour ride, so not too bad. We should get there around 7.30. But again, the thing I want to focus on today is how to come back from a bad game, how to bounce back. Because that's the most important thing as a pro is to not have two bad games in a row. That's that level of consistency that you need to have in order to make any money playing this game and in order to keep your job, if I'm being honest. So I'm gonna do a little warm up right now and also kind of talk about my mindset going into this next game. All right, after a bad game, my habit and a lot of players' habits are to believe that a bad performance means they are a bad player. So you attach your identity to your performance and that's what actually leads to more poor performance. So that's the narrative that going into this last week and leading up to this game, I've been having to combat in terms of doing things that actively reinforce the idea that I'm a good player and I am who I say I am and not doing things that reinforce this idea, this imagined idea that I'm a bad player because I had a bad game. So ways in which I do this, is I've watched extra film this week. I've shown up more in my relationships. I've put in extra work 30 minutes before practice, the light shooting workout, touch work, core work, things that are not tough on my body because another common theme I see when players have bad games that lead to more bad games is out of the insecurity that their performance was bad, they overwork, they overcompensate, and they actually kill their body in order that it's harder for them to perform next game because of all the extra work they put in and all the pounding they put in on their body throughout the week. So again, ways in which I combat this narrative that a bad performance means I'm a bad player. I put in extra work, conscious work. I show up more in my relationships and I watch film. Those are just three simple things I do and I think you should add. One thing I've been focusing on this week is finishing off two in the paint. I have a really bad habit, especially when there's contact or bodies around me to jump off one foot. So I've been really focusing on trying to get to the two feet, gives you more options allows you to be more under control and really control your defender more. You can add fakes and all sorts of different things when you play off two feet. So that's my emphasis going into this game. When I attack, to play more off two feet, play with fakes. One small thing for this game that allowed me to take my mind off my previous bad performance.
Wow, nice blue tiles. Yeah, it's one bed, one bed for me and you, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so we arrived at the hotel about, I wanna say nine, and then we had dinner, played a little Uno, and now it's about time to go to bed. And I think before I go to bed, last thing I'm gonna say is after a bad game, it's very easy to lose your confidence. The quickest way to combat a lack of confidence is an increased amount of aggression. So my number one advice to combat low confidence is high aggression, especially early in the game. Just be really aggressive. Prove it to yourself that you want to make the play. Prove it to yourself that you can make the play, but you just have to be willing to make a play. That's my tip before I go to bed. Combat doubt with aggression. All right, I'm going to bed. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. This is absolutely crazy. The night before a game, they're practicing for carnival. And apparently, Ovar is known for this crazy parade thing. It's really popular in Rio de Janeiro. But literally, right outside our hotel, and this is supposed to go to like two in the morning. This, I, sw I swear, this has to be illegal. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but literally, the drums are right there. I like, this is absurd. Like, you gotta be kidding me. This can't be real. We have guys on our team that like, can't sleep if there's any sort of noise either. So, I don't know how this is gonna go. Well, this is nuts. It's literally blasting. If you can name all these, you had a great childhood. Let's see. Boom, boom. You gotta know that one. You gotta know that one. And boom. This is gonna be like my left leg. This is gonna be all spot tattoos, cartoons that remind me of my childhood. So that's what we're going with this part of the sleeve. So today we're playing Overance. I think they're in about fifth place in our league, just outside of the top four teams, but they're a solid team. They've been playing really well as of late. They beat our rival Sporting last round. So they're playing really well. This team has two really solid big men that play really well off each other. And then they just signed in the last month or so, two months, a really, a really good sharpshooter. So that's kind of the scouting report. They got three main guys we gotta look out for, but I'd say stylistically, we're a bit different. We like to run get up and down very simple quick plays whereas overance they're gonna run a lot of sets really try and get in sets that put their post players in spots to score kind of mid post low block stuff like this so i think the key for tonight is to control the tempo we want to play at our pace get them uncomfortable get them going up and down and then another key for us is to stop the short roll they're really really good at kind of dropping that little pocket pass in and from there we're at a disadvantage so our key tonight is to control the tempo stop the short roll to just get back in our rhythm like i said last game was our worst game of the season we have to come out early and just be aggressive be the aggressor show that we want to make good plays and that we believe in ourselves as a team you know because every time you have a bad game there's always that little start of the game where you got to remember like oh shoot we're a good team kind of the key for tonight 
we uh, we already had breakfast this morning. Um, now we're gonna go on a team walk around team walk here in like 30 minutes. Uh, kind of see the city a little bit, get the blood flowing. Then we have lunch, a little bit of film and walk through, and then it's game time. So I will catch up with you guys soon. And yeah, let's keep it rolling. Today we're wearing the white jerseys. I think I like our red ones better, but these are still pretty clean. I don't know why in Europe you tend to wear your white jerseys on the road. In the States, normally white jersey means home. But we're wearing white today. Got my, my Batman mask. Sadly, I only get to wear this for another about two, three weeks. Not sadly, happily. I got the reverse crinches today. And of course, a little calf sleeve. So that's what we're rocking today. Game is in two and a half hours. We have walkthrough and film, and then we're on and after the game, we'll do a little film breakdown. And hopefully I'll show you what it looks like to bounce back from a bad game. Game time, we were planning on a bounce back performance from the team, which we did, but personally, I did not. Let's break it down. There's always opportunity to get better. I came off the bench tonight, so late in the first corner, I get my first real action. It's a spread pick and roll with the big and a drop, and I make a nice pass right here. When attacking a drop coverage, it's super important to get downhill and make the big commit to the ball handler. Here I do that well with the second attacking step. Drop off a nice pass. We don't convert, but that's, that's life. Here in the second quarter, Mac does a nice lift fake, drives, makes an extra pass. I shoot this confidently. I like the rhythm. Just rimmed out. Good shot. Now here later in the second quarter, I get another spread pick and roll. The big is in a drop coverage again, this time I'm reading the next defender. This outside defender stunting in, he stunts in, I pass out. Zay doesn't quite have the shot, so he skips it back up top. I get another pick and roll, set up the pick and roll nicely, make a good read, two on me, skip pass. Mac makes a great closeout read into the M1. You can tell I'm hyped. Here the defense is scrambling after an offensive rebound. I get a pick and roll, skip into a tween. Get my defender leaning and finish strong off two. Get the foul. Pay attention to this skip dribble that allows me to change direction quickly and attack my defender's hip leading to a foul. Right here, I make both free throws. Don't leave money at the line. Now here, I just want to show you guys the level of competitiveness it takes to play defense at a high level. I'm competing this whole possession, moving my feet, being physical, and we get a great stop. Here I get another spread pick and roll. I know the big's gonna be in a drop again. With my defender being aggressive and trailing hard, I know that if I stop and step back, I'll create space. I just miss it again. Tough miss, good shot. Now here into the third quarter, Tony makes a nice short roll pass. Matt catches on balance, I back door. Great basketball. One thing I can't stand about the Portuguese league and European basketball in general is the amount of complaining to the referees. I've noticed myself doing it, I'm gonna stop. But this here is obviously a foul and guys still complain, so I don't know. Here is an end of shot clock situation. I set a guard to guard screen. I don't actually set the screen, I probably should have. But I get my defender making a stupid silly play, fouling me on a three. My biggest frustration from this game is not that I didn't hit shots, it's that I didn't hit free throws. I'm too good of a player to miss it. On this play, instead of going for the handoff, I'd go straight into the post up because I feel I have a mismatch. This is a great option if you're a bigger guard and I end up getting a foul, going to the line again. One thing I did like is how strong and composed I was on this play. I was looking for a passing option because I felt three guys on me, but foul. On this play, I pick up the loose ball. We have a two-on-one fast break, make the unselfish play, good basketball. A key on elevating in European basketball and basketball in general is being a team player. Plays like this are exactly that. On this play, I come off a loose handoff. My defender goes under. I shoot a confident three, just rims out. A good bounce back game for us and a great game in terms of mentality. I shot the ball absolutely terrible, but I think I did a good job controlling the things I can't control. So I would actually qualify this game as a good game, no matter what the stat book says. So on to the next one. Let's go.